Welcome back to Tim Steve Show. I am Tim Beard. I'm Steve Morris. How's it going, Steve? Pretty good. How about you? Not bad. I see you have your I Love Fauci shirt on today. Yeah, basically, if you can't see the bottom of it, that's what it looks like, but it actually says, Fauci lied. Yeah. Fauci lied. People died. Well, it doesn't say that, but... Well, I'll just have that in. That's the... What's mine? Mary, 4th of July, you know, the thing. <laughs> Joe Biden. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We got some good people in the public eye. I, mean, I don't know why people trust the public or the government bureaucracy, whatever. For us, it's been blatantly obvious. Yeah, for so long now. Yeah. Well, all you got to do is listen to the things that they say. It just takes being a good listener and pattern recognition. Yeah, and not being like biased in your own mind. You know, like say, like. Oh, I know. I can be wrong about everything. Sure, but if you're. So sad that this is the way it is, and just just watch. Yeah, like it's like not personal. It's know? personal whenever they try to tell me what to do, then I take it personal because I don't like being told what to do. No. no, by bureaucrats that have no, they have to prove themselves to me. Even like a doctor, like I'd want to talk to them and say, "All right, why are you?" Now I used to not ask as many questions as I do today, but I've always been healthily skeptic about everything. I'm not a nihilist. I'm just very skeptical of, because of my experiences in the government, realizing that a lot of people sometimes get promoted up. And there's probably people out there that if they watch this and they knew me, they may be like, oh, more of those guys got promoted up. I'm not, but, you know, you can claim that with just about anybody. But, I mean, I have, like, proof. Because, you, you know, you can't fire government service employees very easily. And President Trump, when he was the president, he tried to make it to where you could. Maybe even George Bush. I can't remember. But there were a couple of times where they were like, we need to get it to where we can get rid of some of these people. Because they're like ticks. Once you're burrowed into government service, it's hard to get rid of somebody. And so, a lot of times, they promote you up and out of the area. Just to get rid of you. Just to get rid of you. So now you have somebody who couldn't do a lower-level job responsible for a higher-level job just because... There was no way to properly fire them. I mean, it's possible. Yeah. It's very possible. Allegedly, I've heard somebody did it once, and then accusations may or may not have been made that they were biased against handicapped people. <laughs> Yeah, it's already some bias. Allegedly, I don't know. I mean, that's the one that I know of personally. So, uh, Andrea's on her way to Claremont, and uh, she texts me. She's like, hey, there's a truck on its side in the Country Cafe parking lot. And uh, she's like, I tried to take a picture, but my phone wouldn't operate quick enough, whatever. So then I'm going online to, like, just do some research for the show. And here's a picture. Um, and if anyone wants to say, oh, my God, you shouldn't do that. Maybe the family doesn't know the truck's on the side. Well, this was on Facebook, so I just took it and forwarded it. It was on Facebook, and this is going to be another. Oh, yeah. This will be hours yeah, before tonight. this is on. It'll be exactly. on, like, 5 p.m. tonight. Yeah. But uh, Andrew's like, I wonder if the person was, like, in a hurry to get in. It was, like, really hungry and, like, I don't know. I thought Country Cafe was closed. No. Uh, is it closed on Mondays? I thought it closed now for good. No. Really? It's still open? Country Kitchen. I know that closed now. Yeah. But I thought this one did, too. No, nope. I've been there a few times lately. Hmm. Go see Nikki, Ash. I haven't been there in probably a year. I think the last time I ate there was actually with John Paul and his family. Actually, no, it's open today. See, look, the little open flag behind the truck. Hmm. I don't know how you do that. If you cut in like this too hard, coming from Walmart area down and cut it hard, you would put it on the other side. So... Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're coming from, like, Cumbies at a 100 and turn, you could put on this. I don't even know. I don't know. I some, Unless now they were turning left and someone hit them. Yeah, maybe we don't see that. With the lower front end of a car, maybe it popped up the front wheel. So many times now you look at cars, you just don't understand how the heck that even happened. Like, I remember when I was on the fire department years ago, like, rollers were rare. Well, I hope everybody's okay. Calling. Yeah, I mean, I don't see any fire department or anything here, and everybody's out of the vehicle by the look. So. And honestly, it doesn't look damage you know i mean it's probably total now it's on its side but yeah yeah so she told me local news yeah local news breaking, breaking eight hours later because it's yeah. not going to air till four to five o'clock tonight be my yeah. guess yeah 
So, uh, I'm trying to think. Well, I guess while I'm thinking of it, I sent you this picture yesterday. It'll open on Don't mind me. I'm just drinking my gigantic water yeah, bottle. Yeah, we got big old <laughs> water bottles today. Glass, uh, so we're not getting any, uh, yeah, no fluorocarbons or PCBs or whatever, yeah. PCAs, Let's allegedly. See. We'll see how long the show goes and see if one of us somehow breaks one of those things. But <laughs> So here's a picture of my haul I finished yesterday. Um, these are nice. the boards I finally, like, polyed up in the garage. They've been polyed for, like, a month now. And uh, I was like, all right, I, just, I put them in the haul, and it's going to look so good when it's done. I can't wait to, like, really get it all done. But it uh, felt nice to, like, hey, I got some more done. So that's yeah, getting there. Hey, lot, I'm but. looking forward to that bathroom getting a door on it. I know. As you can see, it's got a blanket on it still. <laughs> well, it's because... That way I can stay longer than 45 minutes well, to an hour and a half. I have a door for it, like, but the problem is we're going to put a sliding like barn kind of door there. And Andrea misplaced the rails and stuff when we moved. And, you know, they're kind of expensive. She don't want to go buy more and then find them and then, you know, whatever. Right. That's really the only thing. Because the other day she was like, you know, if you want to just put a regular door on that for now. And I'm like, oh, hell no, because that's way more work yeah, for nothing. And... Exactly. I'll just go buy the rails again if I'm going to do that. But, um, yeah, no, I don't do that. Is there going to be a way to lock it? Or is it if it's, yeah, open, we can put a... if it's open, that means it's open. And then you, when it's closed, that means somebody's in there? I don't know yet. Hey, these are things that I am one of those guys. I have to be fully prepared before I do something new. To include go to someone's house and the one she had on uh, Corbin Row when she lived there, we just had a little the little latch thing on it. I'm sure we'll do something like that because I don't like it where you know like right now every time you go in the bathroom, Adelina comes in. Doesn't matter who's in there, like she'll be open and like hey or then oh I gotta go pee. I'm like because we're potty training there and she's doing fantastic and uh, I'll be in there and I'll be on the va- you know on the toilet and I'm like. She'll come right in. She has a little toilet. looks just like a big one, you know? And I'm like, well, I'm trying to go to the bathroom in peace and alone. And, yeah, no, there's no such thing as alone. It's so, yeah, I mean, I could get it. Like, if you're there and you're like, well, I kind of want to just be in the bathroom where I should be by myself. <laughs> and my daughter, who's going to be three this month, like, busted in. But, yeah, so hopefully we'll get that done soon. But it's a, It's looking good. It is. It's. It's getting there. Every day you get something else. Try to, yeah. I'm just like the most, I'm so critical of my own stuff. Because, like, I know if I were, like, quote-unquote professional carpenter game and looked at it, I'd be like, yeah. You could tell, like, I did it. But, like, from people that don't have any background on that, they're like, oh, it looks so great. And I'm like, trying to, like, thank you. But I also don't want to give them the impression, like, oh, yeah, because I'm this great carpenter. Because I'm not at all. I can do it. It'll look good. It'll be perfect for my house, right? Because if I had paid a carpenter huge money to make it all perfect, and then with kids, and then, yeah, I'd probably be just frustrated and angry because the right, right things is just wear and take, you know, you know, how it is like when your kids are out of the house and you're kind of like, oh, I can finally do these things that the kids won't wreck, but. Yeah, you can't have anything nice. Yeah. So it's, but. I mean, you can. Yeah, if you have no kids and you, yeah. yeah or the kids. You know, walk around in reverence to every surface. Yeah. Like, there was a little piece hanging off of Adelina's claws the other day. And I'm like, don't do that. And I, I said it. She just rips it off. So now there's a little spot where she ripped the paint off that just just a little thing that she... And I'm like, I just walked away and just was like, <laughs> why do I try? <laughs> nah, I put a poster over it when she's a little it's, older. You know, it is just what it is. It's not a big deal, but... You know, so I try not like, but now that I paid someone big money to make everything perfect, you know, yeah. But I get up every day and say, hey, we did this and this place was a complete shithole. I, mean, I still want to put the pictures together to kind of show people like, hey, this is what this uh, project was because. That'll be a good one for once you're finished, like you can yeah. do like a before all the way through. To... Yeah, because it, it was a lot of work, but it's feels good. It's not the same place. It doesn't even feel like it's the same no, place. It's, but Every time I go there, it looks almost a little different, like with your bedroom the other day. Yeah, know. I got the bedroom. So we're, we're in the bedroom, and, um, you know, that same thing. It's just so nice to have my own room now. And before, we were in Adelina's room, and we have a uh, 
dinosaur bed coming for her until tomorrow. She loves dinosaurs, and I was going to, like, go all out, but Andrew's like, yeah, but she's a little girl, and it will look boy. Like, I'm like, she likes dinosaurs. Like, who, who cares? Like, but, uh, but yeah, it's just a cool little dinosaur bed. It's got, like, T-Rex on it or whatever. So I just, I think it's great that she likes that stuff, you know? Like, she does Paw Patrol, too, but, um, yeah. <laughs> Paw Patrol's had some pretty progressive episodes over the last couple of years, allegedly. Well, they tried like, to... You know, I say allegedly only because, like, you see a clip or whatever, and that could be made by somebody, so you don't really know, but... Yeah, I've watched a lot of them with her, and, I don't know, they tried to cancel Paw Patrol once because it showed, basically, Chase, the police officer, a dog that was in a positive light, and we shouldn't show police officers in a positive light. I remember that, and luckily, Nickelodeon, whatever, was like, well, yeah, we're not canceling it, so... Because nowadays, they would... You know, oh, you didn't like that? Offended two people? We should get rid of that and piss off the other percentage. I remember when I was deployed, I saw a news report about maybe in Palestinian territory or whatever, but there was basically a Sesame Street or, you know, knockoff Disney character, one of the two. It was like basically teaching the children to be martyrs. And so, you know, you look at that propaganda, because that was that's propaganda. It's propaganda. And then you look at what we have going on here. It's not quite the same yet, but there's other shows, not just the chasing a police officer, but there's, like, tearing down history and that kind of stuff. I, was, I just saw a clip on some cartoon or something on Disney where it was, you know, tear down the statue. <laughs> and like, I don't know. I, I'm all about civil disobedience. Like, I, that's our fundamental right. Like, free speech, you know. Like, I, I've said it before. You want to kneel for the flag, kneel for the flag. But if your boss tells you, stand up, and you want to get paid, then you need to stand up. Like, kind of like, right. you know, it's just the way it is. Yeah. No, I, yeah. You don't, you don't have free speech, I don't think, when you're representing their brand. Right. I mean, you can. I guess you yes. can say whatever you want, but then there can. also can be repercussions. Right. You'll get fired. Possibly. Yeah. Right. Possibly. You know, because you represent that company and they're yeah. paying you. And I mean, whatever. just like the people who, you know, during all the stuff in the last two years that resisted and didn't do it. I'm not mad at them. Yeah. No, I like, you know what I mean? Like, but it, to, to like, so I just want to make sure everybody knows I'm not being a hypocrite. Like, I, I believe in the constitution and freedom of speech freedom of the press all the good stuff yeah no definitely just things come with consequences too right something we don't seem to have much of this society nowadays the consequences for things and then everybody's so offended by everything everyone's so like like i know those kids nowadays can't take criticism at all can't at all or if you say something to them why are you yelling at me I'm not yelling at you. Do you want me to yell at you? Because I will yell at yeah, you. Yeah, the like, kids don't have an understanding of what yelling no is. No clue. <laughs> or they'll say something, or you'll say something, and they're like, huh? And then you'll say it again, and they'll still say, like, what'd you say? And then you say it loud, and they're like, why are you yelling? Because um, the other two times you couldn't hear me? Do you want to continue this process until what? Eternity, or you got closer to me, or like, come on. Grow some skin, man. Like I don't know. I I feel like we were taught to like put our emotions down and try not to react emotionally to everything. Maybe that was a military thing, but I'm pretty sure my parents were all, all you know, was maybe they didn't word it that Think way. But it react, was, or... Yeah, but it was like you know, I'll give you something to cry about. Right. Right. Because like these days people can cry over you just saying like, hey, I'm disappointed in this, or you did you realize you forgot to do these two things? And it's like, like you said, why are you criticizing me? Well, I'm not. Like, these were two things that you were supposed to do. So it's not really criticism. It's the fact that you didn't do them. So you can take it as criticism, but right. actually I'm pointing out your faults in your planning or your execution. Yeah. So it, even, like, but they say it as if, like, it's a personal affront to them when it's, you know, you didn't do what you were supposed to do, so therefore you failed. Like, But we can recover from, you know, usually as long as nobody's hurt, injured, lots of money lost or whatever, you know, depending on 
you can recover from it. And that's we've talked about it, I think, with Chief last year, is Americans will accept an apology. Right. An apology goes a long way, especially if you mean it and it feels sincere. Right. Nowadays, I feel like so many people, especially younger, like, they don't, they say it, but yeah. it's just not It's sincere. just like so they can move on to the next thing and right. get back to their life. Right. Like, for me, so here, here's, like, the like a good example of it. So if Zeta did something wrong, I don't want her, like, walking around sulking all day and, like, everything mm-hmm. else. But I also want it to affect her in the sense of, like, it's not just, well, I'm sorry, and then we go on. You know what I mean? Like, there needs to be, like, an address acknowledging exactly where you fell to meet whatever expectation or standard or whatever requirement. Um, so that, that, that kind of chaps my hide. It's like, I don't want you to walk around like, oh, I'm in trouble. But I, but I want you to also not get my attention by doing something else. So, like, you know. An instance would be like, hey, you didn't do this. You were supposed to clean the kitchen. You know, this is unacceptable. Let's clean the kitchen now. I'll sit in here and talk to you while you get it done before mom gets home or whatever. Right? And so I'm disappointed. Then, like, mom gets home and then it's like a smart aleck comment to mom. Like, you are in trouble. Like, you don't need to bring any more attention to yourself. You used to happen a lot in the Army. Somebody get in trouble and then, like, next thing you know, they're out. And it's like, why are you bringing attention to yourself? You don't need to sulk, and but you need to hide out and do everything properly. Like you don't need undivided attention. Once the eye is focused on you, you need to like be doing nothing but the right thing. I didn't mean to click that. No, it's like no accountability, and yeah, there's there's no accountability. No one holds anyone accountable for anything, and then if you do, then they use. I mean, I say that because that was an example I used with Zeta. Like, hey, look. You know, like, I just let you know I was disappointed in you, and I'm your dad, and we're sitting here. We had a solemn conversation about responsibilities, doing what you're supposed to do. You know, you're getting to drive a car, so I expect you to do these things to make life easier for me and mom to earn your keep while you're not working and paying for your gas. I'm paying for it. And then, like, smart off to her mom like, 10 minutes later. So, yeah. Now you don't get to drive the car for a week. And now you're going to mop the floor. You're going to hand wash the dog bowl. You know what I mean? You're going to wipe down the, the refrigerator. We're going to super clean this kitchen now. Oh, you be careful because, you know, next thing here, like, oh, that's child abuse. No, it's not. Like I, I, I saw something good that was, I might make, I don't know, maybe we'll get in trouble for this. But, like, eh. so, for instance, how do I word this? It's. Not child abuse to take your child to a sexually explicit show of any kind. I'll just say it like that. But it's child abuse to spank your kid for, you know, taking bottles off the shelf at Walmart and throwing them on the floor just to be mean. And you can't spank them on the rear end or spank their hand and say, like, hey, don't touch. I mean, we would just, like, like anytime Zeta acted crazy, we would just leave the store immediately. Grocery cart could be full. Andrew's that way. She'd, yeah. But it's like, oh, you wanted those two things in there, so not only are you not getting those two things, but now we're not going to, like, now you're not even coming back with me when I come back tomorrow to buy groceries, and you're not going to get anything. There was this thing, like. But you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't advocate, like, beating kids. I'm no. not doing that. But, like, but that's the difference, But, like, right? if you like, touch something, then you slap it. You know, right. like, don't touch. Get your hand back. And some people are going to consider that child abuse. Mm, no. Slapping kids. But it goes back to, like, like, what we were saying is holding people to account in some form or fashion. So if you, right. if you can't hold them to account and it doesn't work by saying, all right, don't touch that, and they still keep touching it, and you've you got to do something else. Right. At what point are you going to? Like, you've got to remove them from the situation and never take them to the store. Not never, but don't take them to the store for a while. Definitely don't buy them something. Don't reward their bad behavior. Because it's like what we were talking about at the school, right? You, When I was the long-term sub there, some kids would get in trouble, and then they would go and get a laptop for 20 minutes and play, you know, like math games or whatever. But Right, it's still but they, fun. It's fun for them, and they're not having to deal with their work in the class. And so now they're behind those 20 minutes. 
And now they think, oh, I can, anytime I get in trouble, I can come down to the library and play computer for 20 minutes. No, you need to, like, yeah. go to the office and be scared that you ever have to go back. Like, I never wanted to go to the office because I did not want to get in trouble when I got home. School punishment was bad enough back when I was a kid, but then it's way worse whenever you got home. Yeah. Oh, a phone call at home to mom and dad, or I remember, like, getting in trouble on the bus, and then the bus driver would call, and I was like, oh, I'm so screwed. Like, I mean, even, like, if you called and said to my parents, hey, Steve was acting like a jackass saw him at the gas station. Right, right. My parents would be like, were you acting like a jackass? And then if I lied and didn't have my st- you know, I, which I wouldn't lie because my, you know, I, my parents would, I would lose everything if yeah, I was caught lying. tell the truth. So much easier. The truth does not get better with time. Right. Yeah. I like, you need to just come out and immediately own it so you can take control of the situation and fix whatever it is that your lie or your mistake created. Yeah. That's how I worked in the Army. That's how I worked with Zeta. Just just tell me. And if it's bad enough, you might get in trouble, but we'll fix it. And it, we might be able to recover as long as somebody was injured. Yeah, like, you can't lay away. Yeah, no, just... Equipment wasn't lost, that kind of stuff. You know? Yeah. Anyway, it's my my antiquated take on discipline and accountability. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, um, so, yeah, so uh, Thursday morning, I think it was. Uh, yeah, it was Thursday. Andrea, like, just cause it was like 6 in the morning or something, and Adriano, like, was headed to work and, like, spun out some black ice and like went off the road or whatever and uh which was in Sunapy and so uh Doug ring to the rescue again. Doug's <laughs> Doug's was that twice or three times now he's got nah, three times. <laughs> twice for me. He pulled out the dump truck that I got stuck at the land one day in the garden. Freaking buried. Like and then he somehow I don't know how he did it, but managed to get my loader out that was stuck in like three, four feet of mud. Uh see that would have been a good video. Yeah, I know. I should have took the video, but, yeah. And then plowing. You didn't take the video because you were embarrassed that you got it stuck that deep? Oh, no, I don't oh, care. You don't care. I got no shame there. <laughs> I'm the master at getting things stuck or, like, well, not when, in the place. You were, think. Like, I was watching you that one day. Yeah, with a septic tank. Yeah. Like, that's a good example. I, the loader was stuck again, what, last week? And uh, off the side of the driveway, I just tried, like, it couldn't cut enough and then i went off and i tried to come in now uh, and so i just waited for the logger to come over the skitter i'm like hey you want to pull me out and he pulled me out like you know nothing piece cake you know but uh and then when i got stuck up with my parents and my brother tried to pull me out that storm that was like you know the same storm i got stuck here yeah same, same thing <laughs> doug come up rescued me that night the next day i come to your house Message him. He's like, well, I'm actually headed to Grantham to pull a car out of a house or something. And luckily, Alan saved me that day. But so Andrea messaged him and he come out. And so I don't know. He's going. He's up just past the fire station into that 50 whatever. And glare ice, like black ice, the whole road. And he's got a Mustang rear wheel drive. Keep telling me he need to get concrete a or, sand type, or something. Or something in the trunk. <laughs> so anyways, so he like. Is just sliding and like I guess it's the snow bank and it spins around and luckily the only damage I guess it did it was just broke the uh, like the directional light or something you know it was it wasn't bad you know but he was stuck he couldn't get out so uh, my sister in law picked him up she works at Dartmouth he works at Alice Pacte and sometimes on bad days they'll ride together um, which is perfect because she doesn't like riding in bad weather and Adrian was a good driver he just he didn't have the vehicle for you know. So Andrea went and actually took Alicia's car and she's like, oh, yeah, I know the roads were, like, really bad. So, but anyways, shout out. Thanks again, Doug, for rescuing someone in my family. <laughs> yeah. So, Doug, uh, and Doug ran for Selectman last he year. He did last Is he year. run this year? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't talked to him as far as that goes. Uh, I'm not sure. If he does, I'll definitely get him in here and talk to him. And, uh, yeah, I haven't talked to him about that. I talked to him here and there for different things because he – runs in different crowds and hears different things and so i like talking to them because it's good for different perspectives and different i heard this and then i'll try to confirm you know that kind of thing and um yeah then friday we 
had the start of the really, 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 really cold weather. Uh, we picked up four. We had a total of four, like, electric space heaters. So we just heat the house with a pellet stove right now. Like, the furnace is partially hooked up, but I haven't finished it. Like, I still got to do the propane and stuff. So, um, so our bedroom is a little cold. And just, it just is. It's just, it's hard. If you heat with a wood stove or pellet stove, you'll know this, that it can be difficult to heat rooms that are off and stuff. Like, the central area is always nice and warm and whatever. But then, you know, it's 18 below zero. And we got to turn my fans on. So mine don't reverse direction. But whenever I have the wood stove going for a few hours and it's nice and hot and you walk upstairs, there's so much hot air up there. Yep. So I'll turn the fans on. Like Zeta's room must get roasting hot. Whenever the door is open. So now that she's not home, I just prop it open and her her heater's turned off. Yeah. Or on 50. Right. Yeah. Like we know stuff with our house. Like if you get up in the ceiling area because it's kind of like a vaulted ceiling a little bit um i'll be up there doing something I'm like holy crap it's freaking you know 150 degrees you know whatever yeah, there's a uh, market difference especially huge, when you're using one of those wood stoves huge difference because it must just go out of there and go right up and, you know some of it i guess with people walking it'll yeah transfer the heat but so it all heated pretty well like we didn't the, the coldest house was, was like 65 oh i keep mine no. on 62 so like we don't like yeah no but then some people. Nikki are, likes to sleep in the cold, so yeah, I unless like my parents come up here and move in, it'll be on sixty-two at the Morris household. That's why I've had the wood stove going for about three weeks straight. I need to give it a break. I have it on full blast right now because it's going to be like forty today or something. So yeah, it's supposed to be beautiful today. I'm going to let it rest and empty out all the ash. You know, this afternoon when we're done with the show. And See, I can't complain. Like I said, the, the coldest was sixty-five. And and then some people are on Facebook like, yeah, my house is 50 this morning. And it's like, and I'm like, whoa, what's... So I had cool. three quarters of a tank of oil right before Zeta came home for Christmas. Yeah. And then when she was home, it went down to half a tank. And then after this last week, I'm down to a quarter tank. Now, granted, you know, it might, it's an old float. I don't know how old that thing is in there. And so sometimes the float might. Yeah. But they've been running quite a bit, even with... The wood stove going, the upstairs zone turned off, and just and it being on sixty two. Because I mean, it was like negative. Oh yeah, forty. Was, so I mean, yeah, the wind chills were negative forty five, and so it's yeah. It was and crazy. some of these windows, you know, they're a little. They need. I need some new windows. Our place will look. People had pictures on there, like of their house, and like windows that ice on them, and and I'm like. We didn't have any of that. Like our windows. Did you hear any popping noises? I had all kinds of stuff popping. Like at first, I thought it might have been the expansion of like the the chimney. Yeah, liner. But I mean, it sounded like at at one point I was like, "That's got to be like Trex boards popping or something." Yeah, that's totally normal. Yeah, that's that's totally normal. Um, Never heard that before since I've lived here. Like, I mean, it was. This is. And sometimes it was like I could feel it, like on the floorboards. You know, it was like right. a little, nah, it's, like you know what I mean. Not, yeah. not like an earthquake or no, anything, just, but no, no, that's normal. That's that's normal. Like um, I'd go outside. At first, I kept going out looking for limbs falling on the house, but I don't really. I have one tree near the house. Right. No, it's normal. Just get stuff shrinks and expands, and um, but this is like so negative eighteen is probably the coldest we've had in, in several years now, or a few years now. Uh, you know, it's gotten negative but it's usually like single digits like this was definitely the coldest yeah i think one this, day kind of i think it was the year we moved up here in 2018 because yeah. nikki came to interview for the job in like april and it was still thick and everybody was telling her how you know cold it was that winter and so we were kind of worried but then that first winter it didn't really get it was we had some bad and i didn't know how to plow so joe branch was plowing for us and i, I must have made him so mad because I didn't understand the physics, the rat, you know what I mean? Like, I was just clearing off. And he was like, you need to, like, stick to in front of the garage and let me do everything else. Like, do, You're making it harder for me. Yeah, he was like, just do in front of the garage doors and your back patio and let me do the rest. And, you know, me, I can't. Because I feel like, you know what I mean? Because you're like a man and you're like, I need to get out there. Or you're, if you want to say it's a man or your pride gets out there. And you're like, I need to do more. But anyway, sorry, Joe. I now know a little bit more. Yeah, you do better now. Thank you. I wow. appreciate it. Um, so then I was like, 
the delivery session was Saturday morning. Of course, 9 o'clock, I figured I'd be there at like 8.30. Uh, coolest part of the whole year and like probably the last couple of years. So I got up, got the truck started, and which it started, which was good. I'm like, okay. And uh, it was negative 18, but then still with the wind, uh, like 40 below. Like, I was like, whoa. So we get to the delivery session, and me and Bill were talking. He's like, yeah, I left my car running. I was like, you know what? And I laughed because I was like, I had the same thought. I was like, I really thought about it, just leaving it running. The hell with it because, like, it's cold. And if we're in a couple of hours, it's going to be cold. Like, I'll just get out. It'll be warm. And he's like, yeah, average car, he says, uses like half a gallon of gas per hour running on idle. And I'm like, because I was like, ah, I've just got like a little over a quarter or something. He would have been fine. And, but I, so I really considered, like, just screw up. I, I just I'll leave it running. Who cares? Like I parked in the sunlight. I was like, well, that should make it because I have the black interior. So. Yeah, but then here we, you know, Sunday. Yesterday felt like it was like summer. summer. Yeah, <laughs> I was. Were you in shorts? At the end of the day, I got to the point after I did the floor and stuff. I put shorts on because I was dying. And we turned the pellet stove off and we cleaned it and whatever. And um, yeah, I was like, oh man, it's so. And then today, it's it's really nice. I, I guess all week's supposed to be like. Yeah, like that's this. why I was like, I, I, when we, I came out here to do the show, I pushed the air all the way in to, you know, pump the fire full of oxygen to try to burn up all the little coals that are underneath the ash, and I'll start over and be nice and ready for next week or maybe even later tonight. But I just, I feel like I've been running an awful lot for a wood stove. Yeah. I don't got it. I mean, I mean, but like, are they made to run day in and day out? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what, when I was a kid, it's all we hear was a wood stove. That's what I thought. Nikki said that you can only run them for like a day. She's been telling me that for like four years. I don't follow that guidance. I mean, yours is because I'm like, it doesn't make sense that. Well, yours is a fireplace, but yours has an insert in it, right? Does it have a damper? Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's more like a regular wood stove in that case. Because the problem with fireplaces, they it's got look... a fan, so I crank that bad boy yeah, up. Yeah, you're, yeah, so yours like a regular stove, so it's just sitting in a fireplace. Right. Yeah. So it's an insert. Yeah. So if it didn't have the insert, it's like a seventy percent heat loss or something. Uh -huh. Most of the heat goes out of the place. But a wood stove, because the damper and stuff, I think it's like thirty percent or something. It's way less. Um, but yeah, if you, you have it's what it's made for. Like that's what. I, yeah. Because I for decoration. Exactly. Yeah. Nikki won't good. watch this, so she won't know that I'm... Yeah, we're good. <laughs> they don't watch this show anymore. They used to. She but... used to. Yeah, and now all of a sudden, it's like, oh, whatever. She used to, like, lay in the tub when she get home from work and put it up on the sink and listen while we were talk. The sweet sounds of Raul. And me. And Tim. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, anyways, deliberate session. Uh, I think it went pretty well. Like, surprisingly, like, there was... Probably more people there than I thought. I don't know. What yeah, do you think? I thought forty maybe. But other than staff, it was probably more like sixty in the building or something. I mean, these are my estimates. You can tell me if you think I'm low balling it, but I think that's about right. Um, all I know is when I went out, obviously I needed to be there because I'm on the school board. You need to be there because you're on the school board. I went outside, and if I was a regular resident, I would have said to hell with that and go back inside. It's not worth it because <laughs> it was it was cold, but. Nice and warm in the gym, but yeah, I appreciate people showing up. Yeah, I mean, like to see more but at the school board meetings. Yeah, so we talked about that, and so we only had two people really say too much about the budget. I guess, like, uh, well, they they were asking. I thought they asked really good questions. Yeah, they, and then you saved me on the one. I appreciate that because I got because I was trying to keep Donna from having to go up and speak because. I mean, we've had lots of discussions about these things, but as with all things, I got up there and because I didn't take a note down, I left off that we were a school in need at the elementary school, which usually with that, and that's what I, I, and I attended the brief from the Department of Education and maybe the, the school board association might have been, you know what I mean? It was like in conjunction. So it was definitely the DOE people who oversee it, but... I think with the lawyers there in case we had questions, but, and that's what they say. They, they help us. Their goal is to help get us off of there. So they're going to look at 
Yes, yeah, everything that's going on, which is what we had asked for, by the way, for like the last three years, because we th- assumed that we would have been on it. Because you can look not just at the real estate sites, but you can go to the state testing site and see that we're at the bottom 5%. And that's like one of the standards, right? So they have like three different categories, and I think you got to meet two or all three, and we definitely met the categories for the elementary school. So the good news is is that the state's going to allegedly help us. They said they'll give us tons of money. So that's why. So the question Paul Brown asks is, with the issues we have at the elementary school, the whole 211, 211 thing, why isn't there money in the budget for that? And then... Then when I got up there, I was like, the reason there's not money in the budget for that is because we're now a school in need, and the state said they didn't give us a ton of money. So rather than going to the taxpayers and taking tax money to try to help it and then get all this extra money, that doesn't make sense. If they're going to give us money, we need to fix some other things that are, you know, broken. And uh, So I think that might have been the actual phrase that they had told to Donna or whatever, but really it's an investment. You know what I mean? Right. Like they're going to – Put money to make sure that right. we have the resources available to bring our, our kids up, which Did unfortunately she- being labeled as a school in need, which is what we assume we were based on the test scores, not on the 211 of 211, but looking at the, and I can't remember the name of the website off the top of my head, but uh, Dr. Minahan had done a briefing on it. So you can just go on there. Once he showed us how to use that, gave me a tool to go and do research. Yeah. And anyway, so I appreciate you helping me out because I tried to answer Paul's question because, you know, security is important, the behavioral stuff, which we spend a lot of money on that. But I don't think a, a lot of parents understand that. That And we've talked about it, is yeah. that the role of the school, even though the RSA says to be a productive member of society, I think they've attached with that now, like counseling, stuff that... When I was a kid, I and, and when you watch movies, you would ex- expect parents to take their kids to counseling. Yeah, it's a public school. school it's not a counseling it. center. Why do I need to pay for counseling for your child? I'm supposed to be paying for education your child. Like, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of things. And behavior is brought up. And like, so then I stood up like, I don't like public speaking. I don't mind like behind the desk now. It's more it's comfort it's a comfort zone, right? But then you get up at the lecture and you're like, ooh, which I'm getting a lot better. I was way more comfortable. But usually that's what it takes. It takes a little bit to get me a little bit riled up, which takes away the edge, the nerve part, and then it's a piece of cake for me, because then I've could have got up there several times and talked about all kinds of things. But one of the guys mentioned like, What are we doing about behavior? Because you have staff coming in here and they'll be like not coming back because of the behavior so bad and then like I visited the middle school on uh, Thursday, you went on Friday and um, you know, ladies like we well, came went on a calm day. I only saw one class that I thought was like completely out of control, and there wasn't a ton of kids in there. But and then there was one particular kid I saw like roaming the halls. And I'm like, what's going on here? So I saw issues, right? And it wasn't like it wasn't like an apocalyptic. You know, it wasn't that bad, but I know it's worse. And it's not we got to do something about it we got to you can't you can't let a couple of kids wreck the education for everyone and i said right at the delivery session i don't know how you teachers do it because how could you possibly teach when you have to deal with so much crap that's not teaching because you've got a couple of kids or whatever that are just animals like completely out of control like you literally could teach zoo animals more easily cuz you put food at desks and zoo animals will sit there and stay there right the kids are just they're all over the place like so we have to do something this year with that. We as a board have to step up and say, okay, we're done. We're not – we're going to make it so that you're going to behave in school. You're not going to be here. Like that's what we need to do because this is – you know, and people are like, I don't know why we're losing teachers and everything. Well, I can bet you right now that we're losing teachers and stuff because they don't want to deal with the behavior issues that we're so, dealing with too, you know? So I don't know – Right, like I, I have to go and research, but there's probably requirements. Oh, there is. You want right? to kick it out five right. days, blah, so, blah, blah. So there's that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so even if you were to convince the rest of the board to vote with you, I'm not sure. Like I, I think that it would need parents coming up and saying, look, like, you know what I mean? Like we have to lay it out there. Like this is – 
And I think we've done it a few times, to be honest, because you've asked questions, and, and it may not even have been this year, but we've asked questions about that over the last few years, either as a citizen or on the board. Uh, but to me, it takes the town coming together, right? So if we want to stop... So there's money that we're spending that's mandated to us from either right. nationally or state or both, right? Yep. Like, like they pile it on. And so there's all kinds of stuff that we may look at and say, why are we doing this? Well, it's required. Right. Right. It's like when I was in the Army, the goal was to close with and destroy the enemy. Like, right? That's like, that's the goal. The goal is to win wars. And you do that by destroying the enemy's will to fight. Whether it's by, you know, direct action, cutting off supply lines, uh, shutting down food factories, uh, flying over, spying on them, finding out where all their uh, stuff is. You know, things that, like, may or may not be going on in this country right now is, like, the things that we do. We subvert their culture. Hmm. Interesting. Cultural subversion is one of the quickest ways to get a society to collapse on itself is to get everybody fighting internally and then you don't even have to you don't have to fight them so anyway hmm. i'm kind of digressing because i went into a parallel analogy of what's going on around here but just a line from mr spaulding with that being said my original point was that we we close with and destroy the enemy, but yet the training that they require us to do, like they, they did a study of it, and I'll exaggerate it, I'm sure, so I'll under-exaggerate. But the majority of our time, instead of training to, like, work with our equipment, our weapons, our war fighting, everything, was to go and train on talking to people nicely. It's all kinds of social justice stuff. Is like how I would call it now. Back in the 90s and early 2000s, I don't think it was called social justice stuff, but there is so much training, training, right? But that's a, they use that as a social experiment, if you don't know that's what they use the military for. And so the social experiment's been going on for a while. My bottom line is we, 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 we didn't train to fight. And so with that, right, so if you do that in that aspect, so we're spending all of our time, training on stuff that's not going to help you win a war, right? If we're spending all of our time doing behavioral, non-reading, you know, non non writing, and arithmetic, right. Right? that's the basics. Right. If we're not doing that, why are we doing it? Exactly. Because that's what I used to say is like, you want me to go to the range, but I have to have nine hours of this type of training, which, oh, by the way, we did nine hours last quarter, and it's the same stuff that has been for six years. Right. So we're just beating it in, right? So we're brainwashing now, right? Like, once you do the same training nine times in a row, and 90% of the population's got that same training, like, like they could all give the class. It now becomes, uh, to me, it's almost like, eh, who cares about this, right? So then the training loses us a important so if it's about treating people with dignity and respect if you beat it up nine hours a quarter people are going to start getting tired of that they're going to start hearing about tired of hearing about who thinks they're a victim and why you know they're making them victims and they're like i, don't, I just want to go out shoot my weapon make sure my vehicle works make sure that all this is good so to relate that back to the school if we're focusing on behaviors and everything else, and we're not focused on teaching, which to the point of the gentleman that stood up, I think that was his point, was we're spending a lot of time dealing with behaviors because it's affecting retention doing. and everything else. We need to get back to focusing on school. So how do we do that? And that's a perfect example. As a community, how does a community... And that's a perfect example of why someone like Donald Trump got stuff done, like him, hate him or not, because he's going like, okay, he's a businessman, like I'm a businessman. The the goal is we got to get this done, and I don't give a shit how we get it done. Get it done, but don't tell me. Well, you got to do this. You got to no, or you can't do that because of this. No, I don't care. This is what you're gonna do. This is gonna, how you're gonna do it, and we're done with it. Because they've you've got idiots running this country and that have no goddamn clue how to do anything. They have no clue. Most of the people I don't care left or right. They have no freaking clue what they're doing because they're never on a business, never on a damn thing in their life. They're nothing but bureaucrats that. They know how to talk to people. They know how to bullshit you through anything. 
they, they don't know how to get they anything done. Manage money. A lot of yeah. them know how to say no. Like right. Being an HR background, my thing was how do I get to a yes? Right. Right. There's always a way to get to a yes. Not always, but there's a lot of times when people say no. It's because they don't know that there's a tertiary process to where, all right, if it's really bad. Because I always try to err on the side of take care of people, right? So if the rule is this, you thought you were doing everything properly, but somehow the rule screws you over and you lose out on money or whatever else, I'm going to fight to try to get you your money because that rule obviously is not fair. The rule already screws you over. But but you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like there, But there's certain instances where sometimes the rule works just fine, but then all of a sudden there's always a... A what ifism, right? And so when you encounter those outliers, it's very easy to be like, no, nope, can't help you. You're an outlier. Or it's, hang on, this is interesting because this isn't fair to you. Like a lot of people don't think like that. They're just like, oh, nope, you can't do it. Right here it says no. Right. Well, sorry, we can't. Subparagraph 2B says, you know, however, look here. And then, you know, you keep looking and eventually it tells you who to send to get it to a yes. Listen, you have. There's always somebody that can say yes. The law, the constitution, the how it's written, whatever. You have equal opportunities. I mean, it might have to go all the way to the Supreme Court, but there's always a way to get to a yes. Yeah. You have equal opportunities. So you could say, well, my kid has an opportun- an equal opportunity to go to school and whatever. You're right. But when he or she is racking it for the other kids, he doesn't have a right anymore. He's he's actually he's lost impending. The privilege. Exactly. <laughs> or lost that right. Exactly. <laughs> He's appending on everyone else's education. He is or she's causing issues. And no, done with it. Why? Like, and then you think about it, we pay such high taxes. And hey, you know, I don't mind taxes if I see we're getting something out of it. Right? Like, yeah, I'll get this road. You're like, oh, yeah, I got all these great things. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Like, if we had high speed internet and paved roads like because you drive through granted son of p it's because it's our neighbor but like they redo most of their roads almost like every year they're like they're on an obvious pattern over there and i've only lived here for four and a half years and i know that i know that nine times out of ten if i'm driving on a son of p road it's going to be pretty good unless i go off-roading or something but my, my road's not scheduled supposed to be paid for like four more years and my road is a joke like it should be. Just- Y'all should like every everybody that lives on that road. Anytime something gets done with a car that could be caused by a speed bump, should take it and right. have the town pay for. They it. should just tear the road up and and make it dirt because at least dirt you can grade it. Where it's it's because yeah, you can't even plow it. That's how Barton yeah, Whitney used to be until exactly. they fixed ours. It's you know I don't know. And it's funny like whenever I used to go around complaining about Barton Whitney, like many people were like, "Well, you don't want that road to be too good because people use it as a." cut through and haul ass and i'm like that's not our problem yeah, then send the cop car down at random times but see that's the issue right there well yeah you could have a nice yeah, they road take away, they take away the good things for the law abiders yes. because of one bad person that's another thing that the army did. sounds kind of like the school right you did something wrong so now everybody's going to get punished which sometimes like in basic training that makes sense right because you're, you're yes. teaching everybody right to work together as one unit however when you're up in big unit time you know thousands of people hundreds of thousands even some of these organizations and like one person is a bad apple and does something wrong and then they change it for everybody and it's like everything was fine until that one person did it so now you're going to punish everybody and they were caught so everything happened the way that it should they were caught it was found out it was corrected but now because you don't want to have to correct it for the one bad apple you're going to make everybody else suffer and that's that's just a bad way of approaching business no, you know, like, oh, it just drives me nuts. Yeah. Why did your soldier get a DUI? I don't know. He's 30 years old and he decided to make a bad decision. Right. Well, did you talk to him? I talk to him every Friday. Did you talk to him enough? Well, what do you, how do you define enough? Like, it's not my fault that that 30 year old broke the law. No, it's called personal responsibility. But they don't have that. A lot of times in the mm-hmm. army, they punish everybody up. Even if it's like, let's say I won't get punished. But it looks bad on me because they got a report showing that Morris had a 30-year-old get a DUI. It's like, it's a grown man or woman. Listen, all I know is for 20 years, we've done it. 
more and more and more. It's a grown man or woman outside of duty, right? So, like, you right. talk to them and you say, hey, follow the laws. And, oh, by the way, our stricter laws, because you got the stricter regulations and policies and procedures in the Army. And if you don't, you're going to get punished. Like, that's basically how you handle it. And so in the Army, the way that it works a lot of times, not all the time, that guy will get punished or girl, and then everybody else will too. Which, to me, that should stop at basic training once you realize that. Right. Because that's for more of a small team cohesion, not for a gigantic army where one person does something wrong. Right. I used to have more responsibility as a 22-year-old lieutenant with money than I did as a 40 or what a 39-year-old lieutenant com- colonel battalion commander. That's sad. I could do more with money and manage it and have a better understanding of it and, like, control it when I was younger than when I was older, probably because somebody stole some money somewhere. And so then they took it away from the military commanders and their organizations and gave it to civilians that might be working the same position for the last however many years, and they like to say it's always been done this way. You know what I mean? Like they don't have a military mindset, which is take care of the soldier and fight with and close, destroy the enemy. They're like, oh, no, I'm a bureaucrat, and you can't buy that weight set because there's a gym on the other side of post. Yes, that they don't allow us to go to. Yes, that I brought up to other people. And, you know, yes, I'm a tattletale because I can't work it out because these sergeant majors don't like each other, and they're not going to change. So let me buy a set of weights. Nope. But, yeah, and you know, the funny thing is, is we've heard a couple times now that the Pentagon's lost trillions of dollars. Trillions. But yet a little unit that needs weights to make life easier for them so they don't have to go work with some other unit that doesn't want them there anyway. Imagine losing trillions. Hmm. You would have thought I was asking for a sin for a... 300 pound weight set from Amazon or whatever, you know, just to put in the day room to, it wasn't really the day room, but you know, like a little gym area so that physical fitness is always an opportunity for them. They don't have to go work with some infantry unit that's going to not want them in there. Right. It's all kinds of stuff. So I'm telling all these stories at the end of the day is government, bureaucracy, There's goodness to it sometimes, right, because it it can slow things down and you don't waste, but also it can be taken to the other extreme to where you don't get what you need. Exactly. It's totally Well, remember remember way back when we – well, you were probably way younger, but they were buying like $400 toilet seats. Yeah, to get rid of money. Yeah. They showed it that way. They didn't buy $400 toilet seats. The fleecing of America. Yeah. I remember talking about this in school. I mean, I used to think I was fleecing America sitting in a nine-hour workshop about stuff that I have memorized because I've been getting the same propaganda since I was 17. You know what I mean? It's like, that's the way I look at it. It's, it's Some of it's propaganda because they use it as a social experiment. So they're trying to... Anyway, I kept my mouth shut back then. I mean, I would say something behind closed doors. If an opportunity presented itself, because that's a risk, right? The risk, yeah. like in this case, the perceived risk that the citizen brought up at the deliberative was we're going to, the school's going to fail because we're not addressing one simple thing, which is behavior, which should be easy to fix. With a caveat, though, the parent and guardian has to be on board and has to want their kid. To, to do right, to be well, to act right. But some parents, because I've seen it, think it's funny when their kids are disrespectful. At football games, at school, <laughs> like, I, don't know, I mean, yeah, we can laugh at it after the fact, after he's punished. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes, yeah, right, the, yeah. the darndest things type of thing, but it's yeah. not funny when your kid's disrespecting an adult who's trying to teach them and help them become educated citizens one day anyway i digress i've talked way too much today yeah i mean it's you just you can either fix it now or maybe prison will fix it when they get out of school because there's no safe space when you're 18 there's no safe space there's no oh i need a timeout because 
It's been so stressful today. Grow up. When did we become such a nation of pussies? Absolute fucking pussies. Your generation? No, not my generation. It's your generation, but Our it was kids allowed. generation. But no, no, no. There's some Generation Z that have hope. It's the baby boomers, right? The baby boomers that were buying McMansions and some Gen Xers too, right? But like they were more focused on their own individual wealth and success and, and took their eyes off of what was going on at the government level. That's what I'm saying. Right. They're distracted by like they, like, what they could obtain. Right. Yeah. And so meanwhile, the kids start getting, I mean, I mean, you can watch the test scores. You can go on the department of education website and most schools will show you a decline over the last 20 years in test scores. I mean, it started, yeah, it's I not mean, just it, Newport, by the way. It's no, it's, no, 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 no. This is nationwide nationwide but this is i mean it started when i uh, it's so part of it did start when i was in mm, high school probably like everybody got a trophy everybody's a winner that's like i remember that changing i'm like wait a minute everybody's getting a trophy this year then why do i try why do i work so hard to be in the first place and get that nice big trophy and when everyone's getting a little participation trophy i thought that see i like to think that you know, Zeta hung out with me, and I played a bunch of intramural sports in the Army and everything. So, like, she literally hung out with a bunch of guys and some girls. But you know what I mean? Like, soldiers out trying to win. And we don't, you know, everything is about winning. You either win. It's just like oh, yeah, Talladega yeah. Nights. Yeah. You're either number one or you're a loser. Huh? And that's how you have to be if you're going to be in the war fighting machine for our government. There's no ties in war. Nah, not anymore. That's you're talking old school now oh when i got to college they changed it from train to fight fight to kill to train to fight fight to win there's a different mindset and where do you think all if that you're trying from? like do you think general Patton Patton would think uh train we're gonna fight to win today boys or is he gonna go out there and like when you go out there and kill these you know, I mean, he didn't say all kinds of things. You can read about it. You can watch the movie pretty close, probably, to some of his speeches. But where do you think all that changed? Some friggin' psychologist said, oh, you shouldn't do it this way anymore. It changed at the, at the colleges. They yeah. started teaching. That's true. I mean, think about it now. You have doctors that think that it's okay to perform surgery on adolescents because the adolescent chooses the yeah an eighth grade, an eight year old says I'm a boy but I think I'm a girl and I need you to do the surgery and and there are doctors like, oh, that will yeah, do that yeah. or they'll start the hormone blockers whenever they're old enough or whatever right but like that to me like you're that's doing some harm in my point of view. I might be wrong. I'm not a medical provider, but like to me, mutating someone's body. Yeah, especially yeah. at that age. I go yeah. back to if my daughter can't buy matches to start my fire in the backyard or paint unless she's 13 or 12. Spray paint can't buy it. I it. used to be older in some states that I lived, but yeah. Mm-hmm. You but can, you can, can go die for the country at 18. Yes. But you can't buy cigarettes or alcohol. So yes. you could die without ever having an adult beverage, technically. Right, because you're not mature enough to make the decision, but you're mature, but you're mature enough, enough to, to die. die for the country. Yeah, yeah. To have, like, that to me is backwards logic and thinking. Yeah. I understand. But, like, now you got people wanting to make, like, 16-year-olds able to vote. Right. Yep. Makes sense, right? How can someone not stand back and be like, wait a minute here? What's going on here? Because they're just manipulating you to fucking control you. Well, it's the the two-party system is not really a two-party system. They're, no, it's not. They're all the same. They're all basically the same. Man, I watched... It was George, the Republicans get people fired up. Your wife sent me this. You would love it. It's George Carlin. I saw on Instagram. I can't play it on the show, unfortunately. But he's talking about how you think that you're being run by two parties and all this but they have the same friends they have the same corporate spawn you know sponsors they have the same country clubs they go to that they are all the same they all rent houses together right <laughs> right so they think and then he's like yeah then you can go get you know 32 flavors of baskin robbins ice cream because you have a choice right like it's just manipulation 
you think. It goes back to the Federalist Papers. The, our founding fathers knew that this was a possibility of letting the government become too strong. Yeah. Government was never made to be this way. Never, it's, ever meant to be this way. It's very strong. intrusive, and you have this class of people who think they're smarter than everybody else. They might be... In their part they of might be geniuses. Clubs. They might have made all A's, but that doesn't mean that you're smarter than. Just like I'll never else. take advice from someone like, like oh, I have a degree in this, and you're gonna give me parental advice. Well, you don't have any kids, right? So I have a degree. I don't give a shit what you have a degree of. You can wipe your ass with your degree. You have no practical experience whatsoever. I will never listen to anything you say. But you know we are all the time, right? This new study came out. I'm like, well, who, who did the study come from? Well, it's sponsored by Pfizer and Moderna, and they said that. Uh, and the ex FDA approver who now yes. works for one of those companies, allegedly. Eggs possibly. are causing strokes, and so this is bad. Although I just saw a study coming out, supposedly that yolk of an egg or something is like causes like some antibodies or something naturally in your body to fight SARS. <laughs> So I wonder, I'm like, I wonder huh. if that's I wonder if that's true. You know, I wonder I, if this is why the, well, the, the places of burning eggs are so expensive, and now you're trying to blame fucking people dying from you know suddenly just dropping dead. And it seems like it's weird. Why is the people suddenly dropping dead only vaccinated? It's so weird. How come the unvaccinated 45 year old tennis players dropped dead on the tennis court didn't die? I don't know. If they have, I haven't seen it. So. Yeah, I'm sure there's got to be a yeah, guarantee there's one out there. Yeah, there's probably like a random – because it happens. Somebody has a hole in their heart that's undiagnosed or whatever. I yes. Mean, but those, not at this not, rate, though. Not at this rate. Not at this rate. Not even close. Every day you see more and more and more and more. At least uh, – To yeah, the point if like – If it's true. Shit, yeah, man, if it's true. Not, like that's the – my thing is, is like I don't even know it's true anymore. There's so much mis and disinformation out there from probably all sides of every argument. It's like, at the end of the day, I just want to be left alone. Did I send you that meme? I don't know. Uh, you ever, you watched the original Rambo? Yeah, a long time ago. Well, anyway, you know, John Rambo just wanted to walk through town, look for his buddy, get something to eat. And he kept saying, you know, like, leave me alone. I'm just walking through here and... You know, there was a whole anti-war thing, and this guy's coming hitchhiking through town. Anyway, it's Rambo. It's a picture of him, and he's like men who just want to be left alone. And then Brian Dennehy, who plays the star, or the sheriff, that messes with him. It has him, like, grabbing Rambo's arm, and Rambo has a perfect look on his face, like, man, I just want to be left alone. And he's like, you know, but it's like, we want to be left alone, U.S. government. I'll send it to you. Maybe we can put it up at the end of the show. Yeah. Um, but if you know what I mean? It's like, just leave us alone. You got, you got all these things that you want that I need to do and you're not doing them yourself. That's to me is like, you're all hypocrites. I'm not doing anything. You say Bill Gates, I'm not doing anything. You say John Kerry, you can talk all you want. You can spend all this money. I will not do 99% of what that dude says. Yeah. We'll talk about him in a minute, but Oh, you got him on the, yeah, it's just something small, but let me talk about this real quick. Um, before we get into some other stuff. So starting, I mean, technically starting tomorrow night is the start of the 107th Newport Winter Carnival. It's Aloha theme this year. Um, so 6 o'clock tomorrow is a Winter Carnival dinner at the old courthouse. But the like official start of Winter Carnival is Wednesday at 5.30. They do the opening ceremony. They'll light the torch with the Queen's contestants. Um, and it sounds like a food truck, tiki, fire pits, cookie decorating, hot chocolate, Tiki Torch Parade and Torch Lighting. And uh, so the Queens, that starts at 6. This is 5.30. It's open. The festival, festival stuff starts. Um, so where did I get this thing? Newport Winter Carnival. Maybe it was a page. You can find it like the Newports. You'll find it somewhere on Facebook. Or if you go to the website for the town, I'm sure you'll find it. I'm sorry. I wish I could tell you where I found this. That actually did take me a minute to search for the... This little pamphlet here, but there's a ton of stuff happening this this whole week weekend. Um, it, it's so much fun in Newport. Like this is one of the best things of Newport right here. I just think the Winter Carnival is awesome. Unfortunately, like the weather was super cold. We have 
tons of ice and stuff. And then looks like this week's going to be really warm and probably screw all the ice stuff up, which seems to always well, yeah, happen. It's happened like all it's, four years I've lived here. It seems like the week of winter carnival, it just is yes, warm enough to melt yes. the ice out. It's there. almost like we need to – no, we'd have to talk to someone with more experience than me, even though I've lived here forever. Like, I don't know, PJ Lovely or someone like – I don't know. I would have said Ella Casey, but she's passed. But someone like that, it's been around so long that uh, I'd be like, hey, would it be breaking our tradition if we were to say, instead of doing the Winter Carnival this week that we do every single year, like, let's back this bad boy up one week because it seems the weather screws us almost every year. It didn't used to way back, but um, but anyways, there's, there's so much fun stuff to do. Um, check out the, the schedule. Um, Seven o'clock is the Queen's pageant. Uh, you can go to operahouse.com, buy tickets for that. And uh, I unfortunately can't go to that. Andrea bought me for Christmas. Me, Lydia, Devin, and Uncle Fred are going to Jeff Dunham, who's down mm-hmm. at uh, the. Uh, That's the puppet guy? Yeah, the SNHU arena there in Manchester. Used to be the Verizon. Um, so we'll be at that. So I was, so I was like, I hate the timing sucked because it was Saturday or something because uh, Lizzie's in the carnival this year and, you know, I'd really like to go see it. I, I like the – I love the Winter Carnival. At least he did it last year, which took a lot of convincing, like, do it because it's, it's she just an really awesome well experience. And it's so – like 107 years we've been doing this. Like, that's, that's awesome. So, but anyways, there's so much stuff you can do. Um so find a schedule and and check it out. There's one thing on here, Steve. I thought, I mean, you should do. Where was it? There was a uh, well. The, so are they doing the lumberjack thing? They are at 12:30. Hano Axman Challenge. So I'm sure Devin and his dad are gonna be out, and uh, that will be fun to watch. That's 12:30 on Saturday. Um, we can go watch that. Kids dodgeball. That's Ari's fun to watch. At one o'clock on Sunday. Dodgeball is so much fun to watch. And uh, they'll put a lot of times the kids at the school put like little teams together and stuff. And there's some, this is just a ton of cool things to do. So, what's the longest running winter carnival in America? It is, it is, at least according to our own website and our own hype. Yeah. Uh, 11 30 to 1 on Saturday is the Chamber Mac and Cheese Cook Off. It's five dollars to be a, a taste tester, or whatever you get to go around and try ones, and you'll vote for it. Um, Sounds like they had a lot of people that have signed up and stuff. So, yeah. See, I, I don't have social media. I don't go on and log on and look at these things, but I have a pretty good mac and cheese recipe. See, next year we'll have to jump on that. Um, but they didn't do mac and cheese last year. Yeah. It was, is it always mac and cheese? I think so. Huh. The chili, the chili ones usually for the uh, the chili walk. They do like the Santa thing. They call it the chili walk, but the or night before Christmas thing, I think that's the same thing. But you're probably getting people who put, like, crab in their mac and cheese and all kinds of stuff, huh? I have no clue. Never mm-hmm. went, but I like mac and cheese, too. I like chili, too, though. But anyways, tons of things I need to do. Um, and it looks like it's going to be nice through the week and stuff, so hopefully it will. Like I said, the ice, and I don't know how that's going to hold up, but the rest of it seems good, so. Um, what am I saying? So, so tomorrow night, if you are up for something, let's. I'm trying to like, how can I categorize it? Sad, scary, laughable. I don't know. The president's doing the State of the Union address tomorrow. It's tomorrow night. Yeah, seven. Or excuse me, nine o'clock. Uh, should be interesting. This Muppet can't put two sentences together without messing them up. So we'll see how it goes. I wonder. It's like, getting worse. I, what, I just don't understand, like, the state of the union right now. It's in disrepair. Oh, no, he's going to stand up and tell how great it is. I, I've seen some clips of talking about how yeah, it's, hey, everything's man, great. Check it out. It starts whispering real yeah. weird about how the economy's better. It's like. We have the lowest uh, uh, unemployment rate in, like, 50-something years. And but what they won't tell you is the fact that we have like, I heard it actually before I was on the way here. I heard it on the radio. It was like seven million able body men from like twenty five to forty five that aren't working. So they won't tell you about the people that just aren't bothering to get a job. They're just like, oh, it's come on, look around. Like, 
I mean, <laughs> you want to go to the State of the Union? Go to the grocery store. Walk around town. Look around. Go go to Applebee's. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go to Applebee's. Three tables open at night. I don't even know how that thing is staying open. It might be more by now because that was five or six months ago. But I had like three or four booths open when we went. At like yeah. 6 o'clock on a Saturday night. Wasn't it 7 o'clock on a Saturday night? You'd think yeah. Applebee's would be pretty. Yeah, we were like, oh, maybe we have to make a reservation. or like, And then we get there, like, yeah, we had to wait because there wasn't enough people to yeah. Work. It was, I remember it was empty, and they're like, oh, "It'll be a twenty-minute wait." And we're like, <laughs> "For what?" There's nobody in here. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, we only have two servers. <laughs> yeah. So, if you want to watch a a complete live fast of how, and you know, can you imagine like doing a drinking game of like every time the president lies or stumbles on something, you have to drink. Well, you could do that with any politician that talks. That's true. Not just the president. I don't know who lies. But, like, I would do where he – you think he'll do a creepy whisper? Oh, yeah. Of course he will. Who well, knows? I don't know. I. He's going to run again in 2024. He's so great. I don't know how that can happen when the whole Biden family – when I say whole, I mean, like, him, his brother, his, his sister – or sister-in-law and his son are all allegedly being investigated for financial... They're investigated by the FBI that he yeah, controls? The, yeah. the FBI that raided... See, that's the that's where people get wrong. Like, people will sit there and think I'm a... Like, I'm one of those Trump diehards. Like, granted, we have the Ultra MAGA as a joke. But, like, I will tell you that Trump can say things that are off-putting that he can be off-putting, but he also doesn't put up with stuff either. Right. So, like, but he did put up with stuff, allegedly, right? Because the military was second-guessing him and calling up China. I don't know if he knew that or not, or if that's even true. But Millie? if I found that out. Ah, Millie was probably, that's why that balloon floated over the United States long, so long. Millie probably had to get to, He had know. to call his Chinese butt yeah, and make like, sure he got all of his intel on all of our stuff. Yeah. Like, I just, I find it. I'm just as a mil, ex military guy. It just bothers me that they would let that happen and and say that we let it run its course because we know what they're getting. So tell us what they're getting then. Right. Oh, we can't tell you that it's secret, but it's not secret to them. Yeah. So China has they let that thing float over the whole. United if it States. really is from China, yeah. which, Before they shot it down or whatever, supposedly shot it down, which. And then the story comes out, like supposedly went. this happened three times under yeah, President was, Trump. I don't believe that. I'm like, yeah, and that's why he's like, come on. Like, you know, it's, yeah, but he did it. Oh, no, he did it. Like, it's anything to, like. <sighs> yeah, like, well, Trump had documents. Trump notified, was the president. Well, he notified the archives. They asked him to put an extra lock on it. So he did everything that he was supposed to. Like, he notified right. him what all the stuff was. It wasn't just thrown and in the And he Corvette. was the president. Right. Then you go to Biden, whose son was renting the house, is on tape bragging about being friends with the head Chinese spy. Like, this isn't made-up stuff. This is stuff that you can go out and verify. Yeah. He bragged about being in cahoots or, you know, business partners, whatever, with... The head of the Chinese spy agency. You literally have a member of Congress that was on the Intel Committee before getting kicked off by the the new leaders of the of the House, Eric Swalwell, who was sleeping with a Chinese spy, and <laughs> they didn't do anything. They should have they arrested him, him. Well, the same thing with Feinstein. She had a Chinese spy as her driver for twenty years. Like, dude, I don't know. Well, that's what can see. That's where I, as a retired guy who's committed my life to the country, you know, serving in the military, and then to have military leaders say, "Go get on food stamps, deal with it." Right? I mean, that's kind of like the army's way of dealing with everything. Like when you study the military branches and how they handle politics. Everybody knows how to play politics except for the branch of the army. So, I mean, it's 
it's sad that they did it, but it's also kind of like it makes sense because they're such jackasses that they're like, all right, we'll do with more with less, whereas Marines will still show video clips from 1991 and, you know, patriotic music and bombs coming up. Remember when CNN was, like, filming them as they landed? Like, they use all that like as propaganda w- to get money for themselves. Air Force, at least this is back when I studied it, Air Force would say, oh, we need all this money or your jets can't fly, but then they'll take some of that money and invest it in their personnel, and they'll go back and ask for more money for the planes because you've got to have the planes, whereas the Army is like, all right, we'll do more with less. The Army lied back in 2012 to everybody that was in the Army. Like even so I went to Command General Staff College. They had officer after officer, higher-ranking come in there and say, we'll never ask you to do more with less because they were making all these cutbacks to everything. And then, you know, you leave school and everybody wants you to do more with less and it's more stressful. And you got people who are like, you just, you told me you were not going to have to do more with less and now you're telling me I have to do more with less. So you're liars. But you're all liars. So everybody lies and nobody, everybody gets away with it. Nobody cares. I mean, granted, we've all said lies and intentional or unintentional. We've all done bad things. I'm just saying that, like, that's a pretty big lie. To say, we're not going to ask you to do more with less. We're going to re-look at how we do things. We're going to be able to make sure that we can make do with exactly what we have. No, they didn't change anything. They're just like, now you got to do nine jobs. No, we do that all the time. We tell teachers that we need to do more, but we need to do it for less. Right. No, we need to tell taxpayers that we need more money. And So that's what happens when you have the government involved, from my experience, is like – a business approach is what makes it work because you can go and be like, you did what? You're fired. We can't have you around kids anymore. Like there's no discussion about it. It's like you're fired. Yeah. No, we do it. And I'm not saying, and I don't want anybody to take that we have teachers in Newport that need to get fired. I'm, no, I, no. What I'm saying though in is general, like, in general, as talk. a general rule, yes. if like you're gone. You you messed up this. You lost us twenty thousand dollars. Like I, I'm sorry, but that's a lot of money for this town. So you're gone. Yeah. I don't know. Or just, you know, like there's just no. The old, there's the only way out of this is for the citizens to come together. Like mm-hmm. citizens to come together. It's not going to be we can't Trump or DeSantis no. or Bernie Sanders or. Gabby, is it Gabby? Yeah, Tulsi. Tulsi, Tulsi Gabbard. Gabbard, thank you. Um, it's not going to be one of those. It's going to be small towns like ours rising up and, and saying this is what we want. When I say rise up, it means our voices matter, voting properly, voting with our money, right? Like that's how you really vote. Yeah, like – I don't know, man. I'm trying to find the... I mean, I, I could keep talking, but people think I'm... Like, we can't even get people to show up to meetings. Well, right. It would be one thing if we had we can't. a gym full of parents coming every week or, you know, every month that we have, every two weeks when we have a meeting saying uh, the Department of Education is hampering our ability to teach what we need to teach. We need to break away from the Department of Education and establish our own our own methodology. Like, to me, that would be sending a signal to the state and to the federal government that, like, oh, one town's not putting up with your stuff anymore. I just used Croydon as an example. Croydon took on the state of New Hampshire, and they won. And now it's set precedent across the whole United States. Um, so... Why do we already say, we can't do that, we can't do that? No, we can. Yeah, I'm not talking about, so last year they cut the budget pretty handily, the ones that showed up, remember? In Croydon, yeah. Um, This is an email I was looking for, which, it's it's so true. It says, give them bread and circuses, and they'll never revolt. It's the same thing in our society. As long as your people are fed, and you got a little entertainment... They'll just more or less mind their own business. Like me and you, people like me and you, will bitch and complain about things and not be happy. But the rest of them, the majority that you need, you need the majority. Like, well, the Super Bowl's on that day, so I can't exactly. really do it. Or I got tickets right. for this or, you know. Oh, this is going to happen? Uh, yeah, it's really not a good day for me. 
But did didn't you just hear me? Like the whole southern border is wide open, and you've got three million people that have come through. And yeah, but you know, we're here in New Hampshire. It really doesn't affect me. Like so, you know, the 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 government's worked over the years. And my point of view is to keep people from taking matters into their own hands because the government comes in and squashes it. Yeah. With a heavy hand. Hmm. Waco. Ruby Ridge. Ruby Ridge. There's another one. It happens in Texas a lot. You know what's that? Well, Texas has got a lot of guys. I mean, I, so growing up in Texas, it was nothing like to be like, yeah, let's secede. Because we were our own country. Like, Texans have a whole different outlook on life. The te- most Texans, like, a re- like not transplants from California that yeah. that still somehow keep a lot of their silly ways of thinking even though they left because of their silly ways of thinking like they can't see the whatever that idiom is can't see the whatever for their nose just in front of them whatever nose spite their face yeah whatever. thank you cut off your nose to spite your face i'm not very good with those idioms so, anyway see now i got lost because i started talking about idioms i'm probably using it in the wrong no that's not an idiom right you have morons from California moving to Texas that bring – it's the same thing when you have people from Mass move up here. They moved out of Mass because they didn't like Mass. Well, yeah, and like now you control. have people saying and now live they, free instead yeah, of live free or Exactly, die. and then they bitch and complain when they come up here, and they want it to be more like Mass even though they left Mass because they didn't like Mass. It's the same stupidity. It's like my brother has a you know house here. Yeah. But – you know, God forbid, he accidentally cuts down a tree whose diameter is bigger. And it's like, yeah. I thought we lived in New Hampshire. Yeah, no, I can't. It's too close to the water. And, you know. But yeah, it's not even like, it's not even that. The The other thing is that there are people that will walk around and, like, measure the stumps. Yeah, those people have no valid use in society. Right. No valid, like, uh, yeah. Like, they're the, those, those are the kinds of people that the government likes because they'll tell on you. Yeah. They're the same like, people you you know know, I mean? no one like, liked in school because they're little tattletales. Well, that... there's nothing wrong. So, like, so uh, the tattletale, yeah, you don't want people to be tattletales. But the kiss ass, you know. But, uh, yeah, I like the people who would call up and say, uh, he's having people over and I can see in their windows and they don't have masks on. Like, yes. they, that happened in. Yes. Like, that's Dude, the same just... type of thing as going and measuring the stump and calling the cops. So, like, yes, that's beyond tattletale. So, yeah. Like, I, I try to be careful with kids because you you know you want kids to be able to handle things on yeah. their own, but also at a certain point you don't want it to escalate so much. So kids got to understand where the right. But me and you can think back, and I'm like, oh, I remember. Do you remember so and so in school? Like, and you'd be like, oh yeah, they're totally that person, you know? Yeah. So like you remember like because most of them didn't have friends in school, didn't feel validate in any way then all of a sudden i mean they become bureaucrats right now all of a sudden they're almighty and powerful well they become bureaucrats or social justice warriors yeah like when are people going to realize that the government is made it's our government right they represent us they should it's our be. money and they just spend it and you think that you have no control over what they do because well no, how did we get to where you think the government is some separate entity from the people? It's the same thing. It's your government. It's like if this freaking hand keeps getting me in trouble, and I'm like, oh, I wish I could do something, but man, my right hand, I just, I just can't do anything. It's attached to you. It's your freaking hand. You know why it keeps doing the things it's doing? Because you don't say, enough. Yeah. Your left hand doesn't smack your right one and say, cut it out. I own you. We own the government. We it's our money. I'm pretty sure there's a there's a story in the Bible that cut, that talks about that. It's mm-hmm. like cut it off. Like cut mm-hmm. off whatever's causing you like yes. I don't think it's literally like don't cut off your hand. Right. It's go it's that's two thousand year old advice, if not older, that has been saying the same thing that you're saying, which yeah. is get rid of it. Get it out of your life. Exactly. That's why I don't have if mainstream have, media. Like all I see is if I can go to YouTube and you can see like live news headlines, so I know what's right. what's going on. Like I tried to watch something, and I couldn't even get through the first thirty seconds because of the 
loaded front end of it to try to get you to think a certain way instead of just presenting whatever it was, right? Like, hey, here's some footage. You have people protesting this. It was like, you know what I mean? It was, they had to tell a whole story to justify the vandalism, which, okay, that might be your perspective, but. Uh, right, like we both know. Just say that they're out protesting this. Right. If five white cops had killed the black guy in Memphis, the headline would have been five white cops killed the, the black man. Instead, it was just five police officers. Now, is the black part or white part or Mexican part any of that important? In my mind, no, because five bad people just did something to someone and... However, we know Bill what they, <laughs> this is what some they, people did some stuff. Some around. people did some stuff and, you know, <laughs> and now I'm going to cry and whine and say it's racist. Why you're going to take me off a committee, even though I married my brother to come into the country from Somalia and I got elected because Obama put like 79,000 of them in this one area in what is it? Michigan, is it Min- Michigan, uh, Minnesota. Minnesota, excuse me. Um, but let's not look at it that way okay because just because i illegally like i married my brother to get into the country and then now my u.s senator excuse me uh house of representatives of congress um and now you're gonna take me off a committee even though i've said all these things you know against 9-11 and all this but But she voted the right way so that's that's why it's kind of weird to me so she said all that but then she still voted she didn't vote the way that her words said all the time. Now, sometimes she might have, but like she passed, she voted to pass like the sending all the money to Ukraine, right? So she's all about, you know, from my mind, you've seen it. They have Nazi battalions. I don't even think you have to say allegedly for that because I see that on like the mainstream news. Like, I have a- like there's a there's a frozen thing, and it's like. Nazi patch found. It was on one. I don't even think it was. I legit like. So I have this. I, I consider. I, I consider a friend, someone I've known forever, but um, it's very progressive, right? And you would think we politically don't align at all, which it's so not true because we align so much more than it's because that's what they want you to think. You can't get along with anybody who shared this thing the other day, and it's like this tatted up uh, Ukrainian that's has Nazi flag, you know, thing on him, and it says. And the, basically the thing was like, hey, where's everyone that changed their banner? Like, he needs to be adopted kind of thing. Like, come into your house and all this. And, like, where are all you people now that were all, like... Because, like, wasn't that some of the story? Like, that... Well, first of all, Ukraine is, like, the most corrupt country they say out there. For money laundering and all kinds of other things. But wasn't Putin trying to say, like, there are a bunch of Nazis? Like, a lot of Nazis running... I don't know what he said. I, I, this is what I know about the whole Ukraine situation, Tim. Since I studied this in college, Russia has said since the fall of the Iron Curtain. Right. Soviet Union fell. NATO, do not come up, do not come around us. And everybody said, okay. And then last year, um, who was it? Uh, Blinken. What's uh Oh. He was what Hillary was. I, why it's it's Secretary of State. Secretary of State. So he could have said, "No, we're not allowing NATO membership to bordering countries. We're not. We're, you know, we're staying with that policy that's been for the last thirty years." He didn't do that, and so then Russia invaded right thereafter. But it's been known since the '90s. Russia has said NATO does not expand to our borders. That's like a red line for them. I don't know if it's a red line. I mean, it might like a, it's a line in the sand. And I'm like, like when like Obama says I'm going to draw a line in the sand, and then you walk over it, and they laugh at you, and you do nothing. Russia's like, there's a line in the sand. Cross it. So I'm not justifying. I'm, oh, not, no. I'm not trying to. But what I'm telling this shouldn't be a surprise for anyone because they have said it. It's not just like with don't put your missiles in Cuba. We had a Cuban missile crisis. This is just the reverse. It's us doing to them what they did to us with the Cuban missile crisis. And my perspective from the way that I studied it in the past, it's and been very clear. And if if it's a sovereign country, why aren't we recognizing it? And everyone's looking that direction. They're looking at Russia, big bad Russia. And, you know, the real threat to the whole world is China. 
Yeah, maybe. Part of it. I mean, they have all the manufacturing, so. That's what also makes no sense because maybe not now. I think it's too late, but I would think 10 years ago we could have said, you want to fix China? You want to play games? You think you're all this and that? Completely 100% shut everything down and take nothing from China. It would cripple that country. I don't think it could anymore. I think it's too big. They don't care about their people, so their people could starve to death. As long as the government has the soldiers and stuff, they don't care about their people. They, I mean, they commit genocide all the time. And um, what's that? Nepal, is it? Well, you know, the thing that with, with China that concerns me is the way that they control their people. Right? So they're tracking this, just like we're probably being tracked on these things. Yeah. But then they also have privileges or rights, whatever, taken yes. away because of what was said or where they went or where they didn't go right. or what they looked at or what they clicked on. I mean, that's just... And Wake Up America, they're trying to do that here because they're trying to push digital currency. So then me and Steve pissed off someone in the government because we talked about, you know, how they're a bunch of liars and they don't care. And suddenly the money that was in our bank account is not there anymore. Or it's frozen until but, we apologize and take back but that and delete our happen. video. See, that wouldn't happen. That doesn't happen. Wait, it happens in China every single day. It happened in Canada for supporting the, yeah. truck, the truck drivers. Yeah, remember they that? froze the, all froze their the yeah. yeah, remember that? I remember that. That wasn't long ago at all. That wasn't far away from us at all either. It's the problem is everybody's like, ah, oh, this is America, because some of us remember what we were taught. But right. It's I, slipping away. You're letting it happen, and it's getting worse, and it's slipping more and more and more. And, before, you know, the America that... We grew up and it's not here anymore. But before long, it won't be anything if you let them keep taking it. And that's what we're doing. We're letting them take it. They take everything. They, like you said in the beginning of the show, it wasn't even like, take your culture, right? They took God out of everything, right? Yeah. Uh, that's what they've been doing. Yeah. They've been breaking down family units. Right. Like kids versus parents, even with the... The topic we're you talking know, about, right? So right. if we're like, no, 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 hey, you want to, whatever you want to do when you're 18 years old and you're out of my house, go for it. But while you're in my house, man, this is how things are going to work. I don't care what the psychologist told you at the school or the counselor. I don't, none of that matters while you live underneath my house. Right. Under, you know what I mean? But then you have the government that if you if they decide to leave, then they can sue you. Then you got to pay them, even though they broke your rules and they're not doing what you right. want to do, and they're your responsibility. Yeah. But our kids are our responsibility. Like, right. And most people would agree with you on that. It's usually, like you said earlier, it's usually the people that don't have kids. Right. It's like... That they ex they're the experts, though, right? It's like the women, I most have. of them that haven't served in the military, and then, like, volunteering women to go on the front lines. Did anybody ask them? Right. Now, don't get me wrong, like they only take volunteers for that, right? But at the end of the day, I, I don't remember as an HR guy a lot of female soldiers coming up to me wanting to be in male units. That's not to say it didn't happen. I'm just saying I, I didn't ever was like, well, I can't let you in there because you're a female. Because we have like strictly male units. Like you got to. Right. Well, I mean, you only had males on submarines, and all of a sudden you had to, like, change it because of things like that. And it's like, well, should we change it, or we should just be like, sorry, it just isn't – I'm sorry, I can't give birth. That's like, Well, you know, the, with the, the so I don't know much about that. So from a that was, a, from an HR perspective, if I, were to, if I were to break that down, though, I would say that the conflict, assuming that they can do everything – on the sub that you need them to do. Right. I can't imagine. You the conflict's like, going to come from relationships and right. that kind of stuff. Cause now you have a whole new dynamic where before right. it was just a bunch of guys. You pretty much probably say, do for the most right. part, whatever you want. Right. And now that dynamic has changed because you got to. Right. And, that, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with changing the way that you talk. Cause you should always be respectful or whatever, but like, yeah, no, but, it's not, you know, no, think about the relationship just like with, with, you know, having homosexuals, like you could have that on an all male sub breakdown. Right. Because now you got a few homosexuals on there and they're all in a bad relationship and now morale's down, performance is down. I mean, the odds of that, you know, but I'm saying like if I were to just look at it off the surface, my main, my first concern would be can they do everything that they need that the males are currently doing right now? 
And do we have separate sleeping quarters for them, separate showers? Uh, you know, as a commander of a sub, do I have like a, can you even do that? Say no relationships? I don't know. You can amongst ranks, like higher ranking and lower ranking, but can you within like the lower ranks, like this E4 and this E4, can they date even though they're on the sub? Probably, but that's what I'm saying is. Right. That's an added layer of complexity that wasn't there before. Oh, it's just it's not necessarily good or bad, but you know what I mean? Like to me, that would be my main concern is like, all right, now how do I deal with this complexity that may or may not come now that we're going to have? I mean, I know honestly that kind of goes back to like when we were, well, when I was a kid anyways, that's kind of when that started was women could do anything a man could do. And I just watched the Joe Rogan thing on that. And I wish I remember a little more of it, but the reality is there are some things that women cannot do that men can do. This is reality. And there's some things women can do that men can't do. But this whole equal shit has got to, like, are you kidding me? Now, there's some women. You might bring one woman up here that, like, yep, that woman there could do anything a guy could do because yeah, she right. is six foot two and could break both of us right in half. And But then the little yeah, I mean, I was pound, outran. Like, there were women yeah. that could outrun me. I, but Out-sit up me sometimes. We're or? individuals. That's the problem that, and I, and I see it with school, too, is, we try to teach everyone as this straight line when it's just that's not a reality. And in just the conversation we just had, there are some women that could do things that mean you can't physically like physically could do things that we can't even do. Yeah. But we're men, we should be able to do that. Well, no. Yeah, not necessarily. Right. I may not want to do that. Right. But because you're a male, you can do that and you're a female and you can't do that. Wait, it's person to person, right? It's, well, yeah, I mean, you can't do that for whatever reason. Your back's not good and blah, blah, blah. But that's not what we do. We look at it as this, this whole thing, right? Like, oh, no. like I mean, it's nice to like to think that. Like, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't treat women differently, I don't think. No, I, I don't. I don't think I do. I hope I don't. But you know what I mean? Like, I... There, are, everybody brings their own skill set to the table, and then if you're in charge, yeah. you got to figure out how to maximize it. How do I get the most right. out of Tim? Right. How do I get the most out of Steve? You know, Nikki, whatever. Like you got to the the guy or gal in charge has got to figure out what's their motivation. I remember, and they got to figure out how to do that in between uh, 300 days of social justice warrior training that the military requires now. I got to tell you a real quick funny story. So. This kind of goes to this guys and girls and whatever. So this is back when I was with my ex-wife, and we lived in Conquer for a little while. So went to Valvoline, which Valvoline's awesome down here. So it's kind of like Prompto up here, but they do more. Like they really check your car out, your lights and all that kind of stuff. And it does cost a little bit more than the place up here. So whatever. They check your air pressure and all this. So I went in like one evening to get oil changed in my truck or something. And a nice thing, too. Prior to COVID, you'd get out at Prompto. You'd go in the waiting room. Well, Valvin, you didn't get out of your car. You just stayed there. And But it was like all, it was like three employees there that night, and it was only females. And my ex-wife's like looking around like, where's the guy to like oversee it all, right? Like, And it's funny because she was like the, probably the biggest setback to women's rights ever because she was very much like, well, no, there's, you know, you're a female. You can't work on cars. And, and I don't have that mentality not to that degree right um like i still obviously look at you know if the if a female shows up to work on my heating system still in my brain it's like does she know what she's doing even though in reality she's probably the best freaking plumbing heating tech they have at the company right. but but i just remember and i'm like what are you, like shut up like they can change the freaking oil they know what they're doing they're trained to do it like just yeah, yeah, hopefully the manager wouldn't have left exactly. three employees on their own, right? Regardless, of but it was sex, just right? it was funny for me because I was like, "Oh my god!" You were like, the rational one, yeah, I was the rational one, and the the female you think would be like, "Yeah, absolutely, they can do it." Was like, "Oh my god!" Like, should you get out and check and make sure that like they you know did everything right? And I'm like, "They hey, know what they're freaking that doing." That sounds like some misogyny. That goes back to the the riddle of Doctor. Works on patient on was it man and his son were in a car accident gets to the hospital and the doctor says I can't operate on this guy it's my son and then you know 
It's because the mom's the doctor. She's a surgeon. But that's supposed to. It was in a movie or something a long right. time ago. But it's to highlight that, um, you know, and, and I, I believe, like we have, we already said it. So I don't want anybody texting, writing, canceling us. There are women who can do way more than men on a physical thing and everything else. But on the grand scheme of things, we have denser bone mass, or was it bone density? And we generally, usually taller. Generally speaking, stronger. Now, granted, there are, like you, I'm, I'm given the benefit of the doubt. There are people that are women that are going to be better, faster, stronger, probably more handsome than me, <laughs> if that's possible. Dude, but, I know this girl who freaking. But you know what I'm saying. So, like at the end of the day, I think what we're saying is treat everybody and maximize whatever their potential is, and don't just assume that. Everybody can do something or cannot do something because of their sex or whatever, right? But, like, it yeah. should be maximizing individual potential. Yeah, treat it equally. Don't look for everybody's strengths and then try to, if somebody has a weakness, pair them up or put them with a group where their strengths are going to minimize that weakness so it either gets flushed out or, you know, or wiped out or it's, you know, worked on because they're around people who don't have that weakness. I don't know. That's my 98 cents. I've been talking a lot today. Yeah. Do I know a girl that's a gymnast, can work on cars, can dress down to just like, I don't know, not even look really attractive, just dress down, right? And then can dress up to look, you know, like the prom queen. Like just, and I'm like, that's the perfect, like, well rounded person, right? Like, cause you, and you wouldn't see it, right? You wouldn't believe it, right? You'd be like, no, nah, that person couldn't do this. Like, I told you before, just with Andrea, the way that she, you can, because t- also y'all have way better hearing than me. So a lot of times, it, like over the equipment, you'll say what you need and she'll figure it out. And a lot of times she's like, oh, you mean the X23 or whatever? And you're like, hey, yeah, yeah, the 23. I Like I, that impresses me. I mean, I have I mean, a hard time. Is, like, like, I don't know what she knows. And yeah. you even said, like, hey, we'll put this door up, but we need to get Andrea out here. She's the door expert. Yeah, no. So like, I just wanted to make sure that well, everything that we're being that we're saying, we talked about a lot. Someone doesn't like take we, we few respect words that we women say, yeah. and their uh, yeah. their abilities and everything else. So if you have gotten anything other than that, you misunderstood us. Yeah, I still have a hard time sometimes with Andrea, like to like. It doesn't sound right, but to, like, let her do something. I mean, I don't let her do anything. I, I don't yeah. control her anyway. But, but like you said, like, with the door, like, she helped me put a door in once. I hate putting doors, and I'm not good at it. And that's why I said, no, I'll go get Andrea. You know? <laughs> and it's funny because her uncle and mom sometimes like, well, should you be doing that? Like, and I'm like, she she can do it. She's fine. Because like, she just had to do things just growing up or as an adult. Like, she just did it. And that's why, right? Right. She picked up skill sets that yes. some that I don't even have. Like I don't even recognize some of the stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so to me, that's that's impressive. Yeah. That was a long way to say that maximize individual strengths and stop trying to lump everybody in and make us all equal. Yeah. And stop listening to the government tell you that no, you can't do that. Yeah, the government needs to get in the thing. Is like that's not in my business. I'm here to settle disputes between the states and protect the border. Yeah, it's time to check yourself before you wreck yourself, kind of thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So here's something you've heard a million times. So Senate Michael, uh, Senator Michael Bennett, said that he's asking executives at Apple and Google to remove TikTok from their app store, and he's a Democrat. And I'm like, huh? I thought we heard this. Remember, not long ago. About three years ago? Yeah, when Trump was going to ban it, and they said he couldn't, and they had to get an American company to, like, whatever, pretend they owned it kind of thing. And so we're still talking about this. Yeah, we talk about this all the time, don't we, though? But like, uh, I, I just get concerned because I'm not an expert, but the psych- you, I've seen enough articles and been watching enough videos or read enough articles, watched enough videos to understand that, Social media has a negative impact on society. society. Huge. Not just on kids. No. But 
if we can encourage kids not to be on social media at such a young age and just let them live and be free and have fun and not worry about because, you know, it's depressing when people are putting fake pictures up. You know, like you think they're living this awesome life and really they're miserable, but they – they post all this happy go fun stuff, but you know, deep down, yeah, they don't and it doesn't happen all the time. No, some people are really having right. fun, but like psychologically for someone who's in the same boat of like, maybe they're in a rut and they see all this other positive, happy stuff that's fake and made up or manipulated in some form or fashion. then that just makes them even more depressed. But the thing is the whole reason, like young kids and everything, my take on it. The reason, like, with the TikTok, the, so, the social media in general is because this right here has become a babysitter. And so if I can just give my kid a phone and I don't actually have to be a parent anymore, oh, whatever. So everybody's getting lazier. Like, COVID really brought that out of people. Like, now it's a fight to get people to do their damn jobs or even go back to work, right? I can just sit here and the government will send me a check while I go to work. Uh, all right. Do you have any self-respect whatsoever? That, you know, so you, how do you expect these, uh, especially in the elementary school, how do you expect these young kids to come to school, sit in a class? Eight hours a day. Eight hours a day. And a half, whatever it is. And it's like, I'm 39 and I'll sit there and watch TV and I'm on my phone because I'm bored. So if that's an issue for me, and then all these kids, they have ADHD. No, they don't. They don't have ADHD. They need to be out playing and being engaged. That's my take on it. Like, yeah, I'm not. A, They're constantly getting stimulation to their mind. Yeah, like I mean, you, like when I was growing up. Granted, I had an older brother, right? And so, my granny watched us when we were younger. And then I think I said on the show there was like one year where I had to, I rode the bus and got off, like in the fourth grade or whatever, at the daycare or whatever. Um, but other than that, in the summertime, it was get out of the house. Don't, don't, I mean, we sat at a kid's table. We didn't even get to, like, I didn't interrupt an adult if they were telling a story. Like, there was no, like, uh, excuse me, excuse me. Like, even saying excuse me wouldn't work. I had to know to wait for a pause in the conversation. And maybe I'd get my question answered if I was. You'd be on the damn phone nowadays and the kid's trying to interrupt you. It happens all the time. I'm like. Can you not see that she's on the phone? It used to make me mad at, like, work. And, I, and I've and i caught myself doing it to people, and if I catch myself, I always apologize. But, like, you're talking with someone, and I just walk up and start talking. Like, when there's a pause in the conversation, like, people do that to me. And I'm like, you know, we're talking right here. <laughs> like, you wait a second. But I, I've done that to people. So it's just it's one of those things. But it's one of my pet peeves of my own that I know I've done. And I definitely don't like it when people do it to me if, you and I are talking, and someone just comes up and starts talking to either one of us about, it's like, do you not see us talking? Like, how about an excuse me, please? Or, hey, how are y'all doing? Can I jump in here and ask him a question? Don't mean to interrupt you. Like, people just come up and interrupt and have no, and, I say, and I'll say it, I like, because I hate being a hypocrite. I've done it, caught myself doing it, and, I, and I'm my own worst critic, so I'll beat myself up for it. Usually I apologize for doing it if I catch myself. Did you see that uh, Dr. Evil uh, tells Elon Musk that he should forget about space travel and focus on vaccines? <laughs> Dr. Evil as in Bill Gates. Willie Fence is what I like to refer to him as. But yeah. You should work with me, Elon, to, you know, destroy to the control world. The population control the population. Through vaccines? Mm. See, Musk is more that th free, free thinker, I think. And, uh, yeah. Excuse me. I don't know. Musk is still wanting to do the whole put a chip in your brain. I don't trust any of them. I, I'm not. I, I like who I am. I don't want to be connected to anything that anyone else has access to. And if I already have it because I was in the military for so long, I hope no one ever uses it. Because I don't know what they injected me with. All those things. I'm sorry, but, you know, Dr. Uh, Evil here. It's funny. We're supposed to take... Medical advice for me. First of all, you're not a doctor. You're not even a computer guy, really. You're just a con artist that stole the freaking design and then patented it and all that. Like, you're... Opportunist. Yeah. And then you're a fat old man that probably has never gone to the gym. Yeah, you know, he doesn't, like... 
Now, if you were Mr. I'm fit, whatever, then, you know, maybe then you, I, you'd get a little more. But you're not. You're some rich asshole that's overweight that did a little kids on Epstein's Island, allegedly. I'll say I don't allegedly. know if he did that. I, he I'm was at Epstein's it. Island where that went on. I'm sure on Epstein's Island, I'm sure he was actually talking about vaccines. I'm sure he was. No, he was probably talking about no. cloning. I mean, he was yeah. on some weird stuff. Clone is. Epstein, allegedly. That could be. Gates was like, yeah, we should clone these little kids that we stole from a foreign country that... Is it just a foreign country? You know, oh, you got, that's true. have you ever looked to see how many missing kids 800, there are? 800,000 a year. Was it 800 or 400? Mm-mm. It was either seven or eight. It's huge. Go missing every year. I thought it was 400,000. Nope. All right, keep talking. I want to Google this. Um, or not Google. I'll do... Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll bing it. That's the biggest thing that bothers me when you see a well not the biggest thing but i guess the thing that comes from my mind is when you see a missing kid and you see it on facebook all the time like and thank god most of it's like you know kid wasn't where they're supposed to be situation but but the ones that disappear and then don't come back like quickly you're like praying that they weren't just sold into sex slavery which is you know it's estimated that 2300 children are missing every day in the united states Now you make me do the freaking math. I'm no, sure. well, I, I've I've watched something called the Missing Four Hundred before, where it was eight hundred thirty nine thousand five hundred a year go missing. Right, but then I think when you factor in yes. the ones that return home because they're runaways or parents, right. like yeah, know. yeah, 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 yeah. That's not all of them like missing and you never find them again. But yeah, around eight million children are reported missing each year worldwide. This is according to Safe. At last. Co. So I don't even know how. I'm just, you know I'm just looking up random statistics. UK an estimated 112,000 children reported missing every year. That's a lot in the UK. So where well, are these I mean, kids going? A small place. Like even if it's a fourth of those kids that are are getting trafficked or worse. I mean, like I don't even like talking about it because it makes me angry. Like no one should ever hurt a child. I watched a movie. If you have a conscience and a soul and love in your heart, you can't hurt a kid. We watched this movie with it. You shouldn't. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just I can't fathom it. Well, we watched this movie with the kids that this girl who was like a teenager, probably was like 15, 16-ish, uh, had this boyfriend who was a little bit older, like good-looking kid, you know, nice car, whatever. And apparently he'd done this many times. And... So they met up, and then this gang, he sold her to them, and then they turned her into a prostitute. Like, it's just horrible. Like, we watch this with our kids, and, like, because this is reality. You don't know who the hell you're talking to online. You don't know, even though you think, oh, yeah, look, it's that good-looking guy right there and whatever. And it's like, like, we show, you know. Well, I got a story. So this this flushed my memory. So my brother, when we were uh, talking the other day, a guy he knows, like his buddy. So this guy, so my brother's buddy's buddy, right? So we're like two degrees of separation. So there's some hearsay, a little, you know what I mean? So like this is like a third-hand account. But so guy's daughter goes off to college, starts dating a nice young man, and then he turns into like the worst person you would ever want your daughter to date. Come to find, like he threatened her, her family, you know, like the stuff that you would see in a Lifetime movie. And, you know, they had to fight to get something released from his school days and his juvenile days. And guess what he did? He almost killed a girlfriend in high school doing the exact same thing because he has some type of behavioral thing where he is abusive and possessive and violent. But it was locked up because it happened in high school. So this girl's dating this guy who came across as a nice, normal young man, and then once he got her hooks in her, start like I think he put his hands on her throat, which, you know, statistically speaking, if you put your hands on someone's throat, you're you're not far off from actually hurting someone, like statistically speaking. Like by hurting I mean killing. Like if you choke someone out, you're very close to becoming a murderer, if not already one degree of separate like it's the next thing is so anyway 
it goes back to what we were talking about earlier to kind of wrap up with that story is that if we don't take care of things and if we're hiding things, like I know we want people to get better and everything else, but like think about, you know, going back to that Virginia case where the guy said something and then the school board had him arrested or whatever and he's trying to protect and then it happened Because the to tranny raped else. the daughter, the raped his, his daughter, daughter or molested her, and then went to another her, school. Assaulted her, I think. He was, assaulted I don't know him. if it was rape. But right. We'll say it was sexually assault and then did it at the next school. Yeah. And they tried to shut him out. Yeah, they arrested him yeah. for trying to protect other parents' daughters or kids. My daughter was dating this guy, and um, and South my daughter in South Carolina, and I was just like, I was like, yeah, you better treat her like the princess she is. And did you know that a a pig can eat a human body in eight minutes? So crazy. Who <laughs> you breaking out some uh, Hannibal quotes at him? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's wrap this up. It's gone long. People have probably left the building, but... Well, I'll try to put some more uh, chapters in there so that, you know, if they want to skip... Hit. We, we talked about a random cornucopia of topics for a Monday. Yeah. It's been Monday. I still got to go drop Jenna's coffee cup off at the school. <laughs> I told her I would <laughs> today. That was a Yeti one, too. I know. Yeah. It's nice. Uh, Jenna, uh, the dishwasher ate it up. <laughs> You're not getting your coffee cup back. Yeah, and you're over at the store buying a brand new forty dollar <laughs> cup for it because you lost it. Like, oops. no, I know that's why. Like, whenever we're done with the show, I'm gonna go grab it out of the dishwasher because I did wash it for. Her. Hopefully, it's dishwasher safe, and drop it off at the SAU so that Nikki doesn't try to take it to work and think I bought it for her. See, it blew it there. That you could have done that. Like, look what I got you. Ah, uh, no, nah, I know. I'm just joking, of course. Uh, all right. Yeah. So Winter Carnival is coming up. So what are you, tomorrow, I don't know, we're going to do plans to do three shows a week. I was thinking Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But we always got to see because sometimes you have a meeting Friday or whatever. But I don't think I have anything this week. I'll have to double check my calendar. I should have a, a rack meeting, but I didn't see it when I looked last week. I'll go back and check, see if it populated today. Yeah, yeah, cool. Enjoy the weather. It's not a lot warmer out there now than it was. Like, in fact, the wind chill in like eighty degrees warmer. Yeah, it's nice. It was nice out yesterday. I was going outside of the garage, like wearing a t-shirt. I'm like, ah, this is nice. Yeah, now I can let the dogs back out and let them run for thirty minutes before like <laughs> JJ collapsed on his back. And, like, dogs like want to go out. I'm like, <laughs> no. And then I let her out, and she'd actually come to the door and be like, bark to come in. Usually, she'd just run for. <laughs> Forever. It's like, no, I, I really come in. Like, I didn't want to let you out to start with. It's cold out, but yeah. All right, guys. Thank you for watching Tim and Steve's show. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow.